Podcast. You ready, B.O.B.? Always ready. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Unapologetically Daphne Podcast. Woo, woo, woo. Woo, woo. How was your last week? My last week was good. Um, This past weekend, I had two shows, one in Augusta and one in a Savannah, Georgia, Country Wayne and Friends. Oh, and you were in the country. Yes, I was. <laughs> and let me tell you about Savannah. Listen to this. So I was in Savannah, Georgia. Okay. And um, we all rode because we had to drive from Savannah to Augusta. So it was me, comedian CP, and preacher Lawson. And um, so we all rode together in the car because it's no flights that can be taken. If so, it's going to route you eight hours when the drive is only two hours. Right. So we're driving down the street on our way from Savannah to Augusta. And we see this place called uh, Ray's Ribs. And it was just on the side of the road. Uh, it was a little small, little closet looking spot. <laughs> and they were serving ribs. So we decided to stop. Preacher Lawson is a vegan. But me and CP decided to get us a rib plate. Um, and they had no sides. All it came with was bread and um, the meat. That's it. Just ribs. See, that's some Southern stuff right there. That's some Southern stuff. So I turned to the lady behind me. I'm like, they, I was like, they don't got no sides. I said, you make your sides at home. She was like, mm -hmm, baby, I make them at home. I'm like, okay, so this just, this ribs and bring your own sides, basically. Now, did they have light bread? White bread. Okay, okay. We call yeah. it light bread. See, oh, when you're in the yeah, South, two you don't slices call... of bread. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it be was it wet? Was it the wet bread? No, nah, I wasn't wet at all. Okay. Oh, see, I no yeah, wet bread. Yeah. I had wet bread when I went to jail one time. <laughs> <laughs> but as long as I'm free, I don't want no wet bread. So I'm standing in line. So I I place my order and then I go, you know, to just wait on the side of the road in some dirt. And this lady says to me, she was like, Daphne. And I said, Hey, yes. And she, I was like, how you doing? She's like, I'm good. She was like, I know your daddy. I was like, oh, okay. She was like, yep, I'm from Waycross. We went to high school together. Oh, I said, oh, okay. okay. But the way she said it, she said it like she slept with my daddy. Yeah, she didn't like put she it Like she could have been my mama if she wanted to. Yeah, she was dropping a bomb without dropping the bomb. I feel like she bomb. was dropping a bomb. And she was like, yeah, I'm from Waycross. Your daddy from Waycross. We went to high school together. But the 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 emotion behind it is yeah. like, yeah, I slept with your daddy. And you know, little towns like that, everybody sleep with everybody. And your daddy fish too. Yeah. He's a fisherman. Yeah. And my daddy used to pick cotton and tobacco back in the day too. So he was a baller. Multifaceted. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I don't know if people know this, but my dad is 57. But back in the day, he said when he grew up in Wake Cross, Georgia, that's actually how they got their school clothes is that during the summer, they would pick tobacco. Him and my cousin, which is like my father's, he's a couple of years older than my father. Okay. They spoke, spoke of how they used to have tar up to their elbows because they used to go in the fields and um, they would pick tobacco and they would pick cotton and vegetables or whatever. And that's how they would earn their school clothes, their money for school clothes. Wow. Yeah. So my daddy was probably out there picking all the tobacco. She was like, he a good, strong working man. Exactly. And um, they ended up going to high school together. He tapped that ass. Um, she's not my mother. You know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> now, I felt the energy. Well, obviously, you know, I'm a food fanatic. So what was Ray's ribs hidden for, though, with no sides? Uh, They was good. Uh, but they weren't hot. I don't know. I just sometimes some food I want hot. Okay. And, you know, I'm a lukewarm food eater. Yeah, I can definitely leave some stuff on the counter and come back and don't even put it in the microwave. Just eat it. As long as I can, like, swallow it. No homo. Um, what? no sexual, <laughs> you know, because people will sexualize you real quick, right? Like, I was swallow, about to. I was about swallow. to. Is that what we doing? Have oh, you ever been swallowed? swallowed? You know, if I say swallow too many times, they're gonna think I was at Diddy's place. Oh, that's where we're going. That's where we're gonna go first. Unapologetically. Yep. Okay, so Sean Diddy Combs has been arrested. Damn. Yeah, Sean Diddy Combs was ordered. Um, held without bail Tuesday after he was charged with sex trafficking, racketeering conspiracy, and transportation to engage in prostitution. Combs pled not guilty to the charges in federal court in New York City. So they done got this man in New York City. And you know what's crazy is they said none of the crimes 
took place that he's being charged for in New York City. But oh. yet and still, New York City is bringing about the charges. Ain't that crazy? They aggressively moved in on this case and wanted to mm -hmm. actually seize it. But also a fun fact to know is, is that the New York City Department has been in They've oversaw Harvey Weinstein, yeah. Jeffrey Epstein. Bill Cosby, right? Bill Cosby. Yeah. And um, also another gentleman, I can't remember his name, but basically this is what they do. Yeah, basically New York said, we're going to bring your ass down. Uh, prosecutors sought detention for Combs, uh, arguing that he poses an ongoing and significant danger to the community, has repeatedly engaged in obstructive conduct, and presents a serious risk of flight. Now I understand the serious risk of flight, but to say that this man is a significant danger to the community, I, I, I would agree, but I would think that if you're bringing about the charges and you want to detain him and not give him a bail, that I would hope that he wasn't doing none of this stuff while, you know, while the investigation is going on. But I guess they saying, no, we think he going to have more Diddy parties. That's what, that's what the prosecutors in New York city are saying. Listen, they cut, they, 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 they took a thousand bottles of baby oil. They saying we don't trust this nigga on the streets. You know, what the crazy thing is what as a heterosexual male, mm -hmm. I've never bought a bottle of lube. Yeah. I've never needed a bottle. Because the coochie get wet on his own. So Booty I'm is dry. Booty is dry. And that's why you need a thousand pounds. Because if you're doing 72 hours worth of freak offs, they said 72 hours. 72 hours is a long time. To be in somebody's ass. Yeah. You going to need a thousand. That, that thousand bottles of baby oil probably was just from one day. That's a lot of. Yeah. You can't go from room to room with that kind yeah. of bottle of baby oil. Yeah. That's crazy. He want that booty hole to feel like coochie. That's what he want. Just a, a lubricant. And baby oil is very slippery. So I know some of it got on the floor. Now they slipping on dick. It's crazy. <laughs> but you know what's so crazy? I think that the court is looking at it like, and this is the, one of the reasons why they did not mm -hmm. fail. It's because one of the young ladies that used to uh, be in a group. Yeah. Uh, with uh, uh, Don Richards. Well, her her uh, her partner yeah. in that group, uh -huh. Mrs. Harper, yeah. said that she was contacted over a hundred and four times by Diddy. Yeah, trying the, to persuade, probably trying to persuade, coerce to coerce to be now, on his side. So, um, uh, what do they call it when you try to give somebody money? Uh, well, uh, I think that's negotiations. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, they yeah. have it like if you try to give a police officer money, it's a specific term that's used for that. Well, damn, we we listen. anyways, we just know that Diddy is shady, it's um, shady as hell. Yeah, uh, but Diddy's attorney says he's been looking forward to this day. He's been looking forward to clearing his name, and he's going to clear his name. We saw the video of him beating Cassidy's ass. Okay, we have seen the videos throughout the years. What the hell is he trying to clear? Well, you know, the crazy thing is, is that everyone keeps bringing up Cassie regarding a racketeering, prostitution mm -hmm. and sex trafficking. Yeah. So they're trying to put three charges on him. Absolutely. So my question is, is Cassie the only culprit or, or, or person associated no, with this whole culprit no. crime? No, Diddy seemed like he just probably is racking up. You think he ain't got victims everywhere? I mean, even 50 Cent's baby mama was mentioned in some court cases. And then he also had, um, you know, Carisha, uh, Young Miami. So I don't know what their experience was. But listen, a leopard doesn't change his stripes. Mm. Okay. So with that being said, if he did it to these women, I think that he possibly could have did it to uh, the women that he's currently been involved with. Now, the prosecutor, the head prosecutor recently yeah. said that with him actually being able to arrest Diddy, yep. they could have arrested him months ago mm -hmm. post-raid, but they wanted to actually build the investigation. And they knew that if they arrested him too soon, that it would kind of interfere with more people who are involved in this criminal organization yeah. because basically what they're it's saying not an is, organization yes that's what they're saying they're saying that combs enterprises mm. has been operating as an organization and operation for wow. sex trafficking so as you can see people for the last week we've had so many ceos opt out of their position and respectful roles at companies 
Wow, that is crazy because several people have just started to step down. Okay, but we do have the video. TMZ was able to obtain the video because uh, Diddy was arrested in the hotel um, in New York City. And let's watch the video. It's no sound to it. So basically we see Diddy walking in. We see two white men with white t-shirts on. And when white men come in with white shirts like that, button ups, and they not tucked in and black pants, they mean business. They about to take your ass down. They walk him away and you see his entourage didn't even get anywhere close to what was going on. Seemed like they pulled him off to the side, maybe to the back to pull the handcuffs on him, you know, and then they walked him back out through the hotel lobby with the handcuffs. His entourage is nowhere to be found. They, they said, yeah, Diddy, you're going to have to take this one on your own. But uh, Diddy walks out a uh, little stab to sound like they got to call the truck over because New York City is big on tickets and shit like that. They don't care. <laughs> them parking people don't care if you are the FBI. They, If you are illegally parked, they will give you a ticket. So you can see Diddy had to actually like wait for the truck to come over. We're now outside of the hotel room and he's in the handcuffs. Very, very, very conspicuous. You know? Yeah. And I feel like they treated Diddy on his arrest like they treat a mass shooter. Mass shooters, this is the type of respect that they give a mass shooter. Absolutely. Like they they take them and they handle them with care. I wouldn't be surprised if they stopped by um, you know, McDonald's and got him a cheeseburger on the way to the jail. Uh, or that famous cheesecake that he was making people walk for. But they treated him like a mass shooter, maybe because he technically is a mass shooter, not with a gun, but with dick, you know. And also, let's just add that it's been rumored that he has been an FBI informant for quite some time. So oh, so wow. So they, they they are arresting someone that they previously probably had a relationship with, right? Oh, so they're treating with him with care. So if if this is true, allegedly he he was a or is a FBI um, you know, informant and they're treating him with care because guess what? Sometimes you ain't going to tackle your friends and beat them up and hustle them. But it seemed like Diddy really knew this was coming because I think he knew the rest. I think with his attorneys and people like that, high powered yep. attorneys yep. and the prosecutors, they let you know that you're going to be arrested, you know, it, it because this was too off. timely. This was like, yo, we're meeting here at uh, five o'clock and five, four, three, two, one arrested. It wasn't like <gasps> he didn't seem shocked. His entourage knew to stand down. So I felt like this was more so scheduled, you know, uh, they well, wanted actually, a little publicity. They knew TMC was going to get the, the, the footage. But to your point, though, he was actually supposed to turn himself in the next day. Oh, so they came and got his ass early. They came and got him early. Mm -hmm. it came, he was actually supposed to report. That's why he's been in New York for the last two weeks. Now, keep oh. in mind, on the last podcast, yeah. we discussed him meeting up with G-Dep and G-Dep's energy. Now, yeah. one thing I know about people who are about to go to prison who's yeah. never touched prison, uh -huh. they want to know what, what is it like. What is it like? Yeah. What is it like? What is it like? Um, I think prison is going to be a lot like those freak-off parties, just no baby oil. And no women. <laughs> <laughs> be but I don't think he needed those anyway. Uh, So, <laughs> moving on. All right. So... With that being said, Diddy has been placed. Mm. And I'll, also, I want to give courtesy and uh, to TMZ for this, breaking this news. Diddy has been placed on routine suicide watch at the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn, New York. Okay, and Diddy stated, I'm not suicidal, but they put me on suicide watch. It, shut up. Who the hell told you to give a statement? You still talking. Yeah, he at this time, it's time to just be quiet. And routine, the word routine means this is something that they normally do. Um, his attorneys claim Diddy was strong, healthy, confident, and focused on his defense. Uh, people are placed on suicide watch when it is believed that they exhibit warning signs indicating that they may be at risk of committing bodily harm or purposely killing themselves. Okay. So um, I think that just with the case itself and what happened to Epstein, I think it's just routine to put them on suicide watch. This doesn't mean that they actually thought Diddy was going to commit suicide. He seemed too arrogant because did you, the, la the last thing I stated from his attorney, he's been looking forward to this day. He's been looking forward to clearing his name and he's going to clear his name. He acting like he Johnny Depp. Was Remember he Johnny Depp yeah. and Andrew Ashley Heard? 
Oh man, Amber Heard. Uh, Amber Heard. How yeah. could I forget? That yeah. was one of the most saddest cases ever. Yeah, man. like he acting like he he Johnny Depp in this case. Like, yeah, I'm about to clear my name. We saw the video. We've seen little like little crumbs. The other mm-hmm. pre freak offs. You have it. <laughs> you got people. Land, you land in the bed with Aaliyah, and I think she was underage. Yeah, come on now. Yeah, you have beds, just big ass bed. What are you clearing? Well, the lawyer is doing what he's supposed to do, right? Lie. He's supposed to lie. He's supposed to lie. He's supposed to make sure his yeah. his client is supposed to, to lie. be the most innocent client he's ever represented. Every time. So he's doing what he's supposed Sound to do. Sound like the attorney was at one of them freak off parties, okay? And he know the loopholes to get your ass off the free free uh freak ass uh charges. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, let's get back to Suicide Watch. Um, what is Suicide Watch? It's continuous uh, observation. So they're just watching you. Um, number two is frequent check-ins. Uh, number three, restricted access. Number four, supportive environment. And number five, ongoing assessment. If I went to jail, I want to be on Suicide Watch. You know why? Because guess what? You ain't got to worry about them other inmates because they're going to seclude you away from everybody else. And you're going to be basically, you know, restricted access. So that means people can't just have access to you, right? You're restricted. You're confined. People are checking on you. So so it's not like you in the hole. You got somebody to actually come talk to and stuff like that. You basically in a cell by yourself. You want to be on suicide watch. I, I disagree. Because if they know about all that baby oil it's booty time up in there i disagree though dad Why? It's, a diff- it's a different perspective only reason i say that i'm concerned about diddy in this case mm-hmm. with his suicide Why? watch is because okay you put me in a restricted access area the only r- people that can access is the correctional officers right oh so that means no so, witnesses no witnesses mm. and with the intel they've confiscated over 90 cell phones and 30 laptops between wow. both homes and all that footage. They ha- can they can even fake a suicide on you. They can fake a suicide no on witnesses. you. No witnesses. No witnesses. And keep in mind. Yeah, every, I didn't think about that. The only way they can prevent all these celebrities yeah. who were a part of these freak-offs yeah. from coming out is if he is no longer present to stand trial. Ooh. So, did he actually got to watch his back And right that's now, maybe man. why it was all in all caps. I'm not suicidal. But they put me on suicide watch, which means... It's cryptic, which says they trying to kill me. You know, it's been doubt that Jeffrey Epstein hung himself. You know, yeah, so I mean, it's 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 been uh, alleged that he's still alive. Come on now. But we don't know. We don't know. But did he watch it back, man? I mean, listen, uh, I know you've been doing a lot of slippery shit. Excuse my language, but uh, we praying for you. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not praying for you, Diddy. Um, You know, uh, I believe that when you have certain actions in life, it should be certain consequences. So uh, with that being said, it seemed like a lot of black men are going to stand with you and think that maybe you was trying to buy NBC or or Sony or some shit. You know, that because that's every black man's whole little rhetoric. Oh, my God. I bet Diddy was trying to buy Warner Brothers and they trying to take him down. No, he's a freak. He been a freaky, freaky uh, 69 God. And we've seen it. He had Meek Mill in a matching designer shirt. Not a shirt with a logo to support a charity. A matching designer shirt. Okay? He was behind Diddy saying, hey, daddy, in the pool. We've seen it, guys. You've seen the way he stumped out Cassie. Okay? So with that saying, I'm not praying for Diddy, um, and I'm not wishing you luck. Moving on. Next up, uh, let's talk about the new TikTok trend. The black wife effect is a new trend taking over TikTok. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. Black people. wife effect, and that brings us to the 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 head of black wife effect or girlfriend. Uh, would be Travis Kelsey. Come on, Kels. Okay, so let's get back on the black wife effect. In the videos, um, black women are showcasing their transformations after meeting their current partner and crediting their glow-ups to the black wife effect. Non-black men highlight how their style and overall appearance has improved since having been with their black wives or girlfriends. 
Okay. And so we see the difference with uh, Travis Kelsey when he was with his black girlfriend versus his white girlfriend. And it, he went from like a swagged out um, pit bull, you he, know, type. He was a wigger. Yeah. A wigger. Yeah. A wigger. Basically, um, a, a, a wiggly bear, um, the niggly bear, but wiggly bear, um, to basically uh, Proud Boys. Uh, cause yeah. that is the same mustache that, um, Leonardo DiCaprio had in Django Unchained. That's a fact. Yeah. And on top of that, he's changed his entire dialect. Dialect. Um, he's went back proper and it's crazy because, um, Travis Kelsey didn't really grow up around black people like that. No, he didn't. Yeah. Not. He got this black woman. I mean. But if you think about it, sports, you are around a lot of black people, yeah. especially when you go to college and you're playing with all the athletes. Uh, the majority of these uh, teams are, especially NFL or college teams, the majority of the players are black. So Correct. he has had some type of influence, minus being just with his black girlfriend. The it's culture, inevitable. He's, he's, he's been able to emerge himself into the culture. Um, there seems to be a widely recognized term for this specific behavior. However, it can be seen as a form of chameleon right the act of adapting one's behavior appearance or personality to fit in with different social contexts or groups so basically he's gonna adapt wherever he is if he's with a black woman he's gonna adapt to the black culture once he got with taylor swift he adapted to back to white culture right he turned back into his brother wow his brother ain't doing none of this no he's not brother white as hell he's white with a homely looking wife that looked like she's um uh mormon and can't dance. Okay. No rhythm. Okay. Producing no rhythm, having ass babies. Okay. Um, I like to think of it as identity switching. Uh, shifting between different personas or versions of oneself in response to different social relationships. Cold switching. Yes. We call so that cold black switching. Black people, we cold switch on the phone. So, like, it's like, yo, if, I, if I'm talking to B.O.B., I'm like, what up, B.O.B.? And I'm be like, what up, that D? But if you take B.O.B. and you take you take out the acronyms and you just said Bob, then I'm going to switch up. I'm going to cold switch. I'm like, hey, Bob, how are you? I'm going to be like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> so <laughs> you want to go fencing this weekend? Of course. I'll just get some, grab some new tools. <laughs> Square dancing? Of course. Are you going to bring the macaroni salad? Yeah. <laughs> and the green bean casserole. So no lotion delicious just sunscreen all right yeah so that's cold switching but he's doing this in relationships so that's identity switching um also it could be a form of mirror mirroring right you mirror somebody unconsciously matching the behaviors mannerisms or speech patterns of those around you in order to build a connection and we see this with travis kelsey but do you know who was the original person of chameleon um identity switching and mirroring who? J-Lo. Wow. Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez originated this, right? That's true. Especially in like mainstream media. She was the originator because we saw how she was, right? She was like this sassy ass Latina on in living color. Fly girl. Then she turned into a a a a a, a higger. Would it, would you call it a higger, a Hispanic? Well, nigga? she turned well, she she went Latino with Selena. Yeah, she went real she Latin. Went real no, but Latin. I'm talking about when she was with Diddy. Oh, when she was she with, was with Diddy, Diddy, she was like she was like Bronx. Yeah, don't be confused by the you rocks that I got. Jump. I'm still, I'm still Jenny from the block. Yeah, she went and started getting rappers on her songs and stuff like and that. And didn't snitch. Okay, didn't snitch at all. And then we saw, um, you know, her get with like Ben Affleck because she's her second term time with him, right? We saw that she just went straight. Martha Stewart on that ass. And went home back to Latin yeah. to have kids with Mark Anthony. Yeah. So I think she's the original cold switcher. Yeah, she's the best. Yeah. She's the absolute best. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I will say when you do cold switch the opposite way, identity switching, like where they're going from black, right, to to white, your bank account go up. That's real. Okay. That's real. Yeah. Now, they both had money prior, but the money, the the coins just really, you start to get in, because, you know, seven figures is a million. Eight figures is like 10 million to 99 million, right? Um, nine figures is 100 million. So once you once you identity switch to white, 
It ain't no reason to come back, really. Come on now. J Lo ain't finna come back to no living living single reunion. Yeah, talk to me. She don't remember. Color. Well, that that too. <laughs> that too. She might have would have been on a living single. She would have stayed on the black side, but her coin, she probably be out here um suffering through the strike. She you know what I mean? Five thousand dollars per show. Yeah. She doing two B movies. She she did right. She I ain't right. mad at him. You know, cause Kel Kelsey, you can say what do you want about Travis Kelsey, but I bet that money went up. Well, yeah, you can tell. Yeah, yeah, you can tell. I mean, come on now, Taylor Swift. Yeah, come on now. That's a whole bag in itself. He's been doing more commercials, everything. So good call, good identity switching. I say, yeah, you switch the right way. The entire yeah. Chiefs organization value has gone up. Since okay, Taylor Swift, talk to me. If the owner's probably telling him, "Look, yeah. marry her." Yeah, marry her. And you know what? Uh, black wife effect, black girlfriend effect. He did look. More handsome, more swagged out, but you know what I mean. He he didn't marry her, so uh, how how much in it was he? You know what I mean. Well, black, and it was rumored that he was making her pay to come see him, like she was paying for her own flights and stuff. I don't know the truth to this, but it was alleged that she was like sponsoring some, like uh, like if I you know come see you for the weekend, I'm paying for my own flight. Hell no. Nah. Well, see, sister, come back home. Because one thing brother's going to do. Get you a we black got some, athlete. They love recycling women. That's so. what I'm saying. And, and yeah. one thing we're going to do as far as. Go to gonna, the NBA, girl. You beautiful. Go to the NBA. We're going to fly you out. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. And they're going to get you pregnant. You're going to be a single mother, but at least you got baby. Get you a little 18 years of child support. You'll be all right. Yeah. That white boy, he going to pull out. We ain't pulling out. Yeah. Yeah. Just ask uh, Tyreek Hill. Exactly. Okay. Uh, moving on, that moves us on to the next topic. Andrew Schultz. Andrew Schultz is known for his off the wall comedy and doesn't shy away from making jokes about race either. Okay, he's so, right on brand. Yeah, he's right on brand. So, um, Andrew Schultz uh made a comment about black women uh with these two podcasters uh called uh shits and giggles um i don't know their name it's some real tough names so i ain't even write them down shits and giggles podcast uh they from the uk or london or one of them ones i think it's all the same okay so <laughs> <laughs> let's watch the video what is the black girlfriend effect this is oh, the you, know, you know just about glow up the other culture yeah so you'll see a, a, a guy who's had a black girlfriend all of a sudden he's got buzz cut like yeah clean he, shape up nah, he's he's yeah, yeah. 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 Bro, I yeah, like that. that. Oh, I like like that. that. They yeah. shave their hair because they start losing it. Because they're so stressed <laughs> around this black girl complaining about shit all the fucking time. That's why they got to shave their nah, hair. Nah, bro. White guys with black girlfriends, they, they, they grow step, a beard because there's up. more cushion when they get slapped the fuck out of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I think, I think the black girlfriend effect, hmm. It might be a protective instinct, bro. You think? Protective. Yeah. Do you guys, do you guys, have you ever had black girlfriends? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, have you ever had white girls? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. What's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> we love them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Just, really? We love them all. Yeah. That means white. Who gets no. yeah. <laughs> 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 that, that, that means, that means hey, white. Hey, let me do no. the U.S. translation. Kendrick <laughs> fans, get <him. laughs> We love them hey, all. That's, that's yeah, royal English for <laughs> Wow. Yeah, so basically Andrew Schultz is saying the black wife effect is um, the reason why a white man would uh, get a beard is because black women um, will actually like slap you in the face and it's more cushion. Wow. Yeah. So uh, here's the thing um, that I don't like. I don't like we live in a country where uh, white supremacy reigns high, right? It does. Yeah. Black people have been through enough. I'm black American. My ancestors go back as far as you can go back in America. Black Americans, right? Mm -hmm. White people, haven't we been through enough? Why are you punching down on black women? Right. Okay. Andrew Schultz, like, and what's crazy is that, um, which I don't expect them to defend us, the shits and giggles hosts, because they're not black American men. As a black American mm. man, you found that to be offensive, right? Absolutely. Here's the problem. When you see other people with the same color skin across the diaspora, they kind of roll with shit like this. So this is very expected. 
That's you know true. what I mean? These Absolutely. men are from London, UK. You know what I mean? They 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 probably felt a bit uncomfortable, but they're not gonna speak out. Like, ain't don't nobody speak out like black Americans. And also their <laughs> we com- butter shits. And their commitment to black women obviously is wavering as well. Yeah. Because why would a white man ask me if I prefer white women over black women? Like you should assume by yeah. my melanin skin yeah. of what I actually prefer. And it's like he wanted them, they they wanted to stand with black women, it sound like, but they were easily like shifted. They wavered. They wa- wavered by uh Andrew Schultz and his 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 thing. Like here, here, here you are. Um, but like I said, you like you mentioned earlier, uh Andrew Schultz, this is this right on brand for him. He's it known is. for this off off the uh wall comedy, uh little racist insults, and it's like he doesn't understand like yo you're a white male and you're making this but you you're hiding behind a joke but it is still considered punching down it's no difference than how the trans community felt with uh dave Chappelle constantly making jokes about them right so you want to uh act as if black women are violent and confrontational right absolutely right like white women aren't trying to because they kill they kill all the time i watch nothing but crime shows and child, the murder game is up over there. Okay. Yeah. White women up a hundred. Okay. So with that being said, um, I've seen white women go off. All women do. All women nag. It, it, it's inevitable. It is it okay, you going too far. It's inevitable. Okay. I mean, let's be honest. Women but, nag, women complain. But to say that black women are abusive, yeah, and exhausting and all this kind of stuff and to basically try to create a division Mm -hmm. and separate white women as these peaceful spirits that oh well i mean you're not gonna get your 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 butt whooped and you're not gonna get you're still basically you're saying your women are basically you're setting your own women back white women back 100 years you're basically saying that they're docile and docile and they don't speak up for themselves and that they're gonna let you do whatever you want um yeah, I didn't like it, but I did. If I couldn't put it in words, it was a guy named Ryan Clark at Ryan uh, at Real R Clark twenty five on Twitter, which is now known as X. He said, "I'm not sure what black what black woman experience Andrew Schultz has had, but it hasn't been the real black girlfriend effect. To insult black women and describe them as complainers and abusive isn't just untrue; it's disrespectful." Even worse, James Duncan and uh, Fahad, uh, we're not even going to try that last name, allowing him to say it is more insulting. Andrew Schultz spoke that way in front of two black men because they allowed him to, right? Yeah. They never corrected him. Yeah. Okay? They even almost got persuaded by his opinion, right? They made him comfortable enough to disrespect black women because they didn't force him to respect them. My experience is that black women are powerful, beautiful, strong, and supportive. They prioritize black family, community, and culture. They take steps back to push their men and families forward. So no, Andrew, the black girlfriend effect is nothing like what you described. I'm just upset that you don't have enough solid black men around you to tell you different. And, see, and that's a fact. And see, because Ryan they all want to kiss your ass. Ryan has black daughters. Yeah. And Ryan has a wife. So it from so, so from a a man's perspective who we're supposed yeah. to protect our own women. Yeah. Right? But sometimes in most cases what we're seeing is a lot of black men share negative opinions of black women to Andrew Schultz. And I got yeah, because this is all is not uh, uh, because of his personal experience. No, it's not. This is because of what he hears, this right? Is what he hears and what he sees, and how he jokes around them, and feels comfortable with his other black friends. And so sometimes that's that's the problem is that certain black people allow. It's just like when I see some black young black kids nowadays allowing white chil- white kids and um. Hispanic kids to say the word nigga freely around. Oh, I corrected them, right? some guys in the liquor store. Yeah, about that. it is. I've corrected Hispanic people too that were just blatantly without. So I'm like, hey, yo, watch your mouth. Everybody ain't cool with that shit. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Be respectful. I'm not. I'm not yelling out racial slurs. I'm not using that word. Yeah. So you know what I mean? And I use it, but I don't use it in front of other people. Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But here's the thing: is that 
when you joke with them like that, they don't know how to figure, uh, filter out that, yo, everybody don't feel that way, Andrew, right? Black women are strong, strong enough to actually breastfeed and, and raise majority of uh, uh, the oh, baby boomers, on, right? On, Black man. America, right? Ma- they, Mammy post-war was, babies. Mammy was feeding all of them. Yeah, we saw that with the movie The Help. Yeah, we did. Absolutely that passive-aggressive, complaining-ass, violent-ass mother was putting her daughter down every day, calling her fat, and she said, you is smart, you is kind, and you is important. That is that's the type of stuff that we instill into our families. And 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 just black women have raised some great black men. I Absolutely. mean, should we go down the list? <laughs> I mean, Bob, I mean it's so many. Bob, we don't <laughs> B-O-B. <laughs> B-O-B over here, right? So with that being said, um, I thought it was tacky. I thought it, and I I I know Andrew Schultz personally in, in real life. I've met him, talked with him, sat down with him, whatever, in New York. But this was very uh uh tacky. And you unnecessary. Know? Yeah. Don't don't talk on other people's experience. It, this shit you saying is hearsay. And if if black women are complaining, right, is because we have a reason to complain. Okay, because we still live in a patriarchal country, and also it's full of white supremacy, racism, and it's prejudice. And what I would say is is that you know you got enough black friends, man. And this is you the did- reason why black women die at a high rate in hospitals giving birth and stuff because like they that, that because tough. they assume because of rhetoric like this right yeah. pushing this type of agenda that black women are complainers black women are dying giving birth at an all-time high because in the hospital they consider when something is really wrong with your body and you know it and you speak it oh you're just complaining you're just trying to get drugs yet and still majority of the people in this country addicted to prescription pills is what come on now I mean, most, they ain't black. mostly red states. I just, okay. I'm just going to say that. Mostly red yeah. states. Your states like Oklahoma. Oxycodone. Yeah, Iowa. Okay. All these states that Johnson & Johnson had to sue, yep. a multi-billion dollar lawsuit Talk to for me. the op- opioid ha- epidemic that yes. was going on. So, Which is revenge for crack. So you guys are white crackheads. Okay. All so- right. Andrew Jones, all I'm going to say is this. Mm-hmm. You picked a fine time to attack black women with Kamala actually running for president. Your, I, I hate your mustache <laughs> uh, it, it, because it, it, it's, it's giving Django unchanged. Yes, it's Travis. It's Travis Kelsey with yeah. with Taylor. Yeah, Swift and um and you, Charlemagne, should definitely talk to your podcast co-host. Oh, Charlemagne probably on the same damn agenda. Yeah, but okay. Charlemagne has a black wife, and I'm pretty sure. Your black wife, well, you ain't got no hair on your head, so yeah, that's so, you're not a good. So example. you kind of proven Andrew's uh, point. All right, we're so, gonna keep rolling. Moving on. All, All right, right, so um, yeah, so uh, oh well, well, we still stand on this topic. We just moving to the next uh, little part of it. Uh, Andrew Schultz uh, mocks James and Fahad's uh, apology to black wow. women. Wow. Yeah. So I want to hear this. Yeah, let's play that. A quick PSA, quick acknowledgement. Mm-hmm. Um, so, if you know, you know. If you don't, that's fine. Um, but we just wanted to address something that's happening at the minute. Yep. This past weekend, uh, there's been a couple of clips going around uh, from when we did a session on the Flagrant podcast um, while we were on our US tour. Mm-hmm. US tour. And um, came yeah, over here, there got a little taste, a few jokes and made, backlash um, that were incredibly inappropriate. One, speci- bro, one specifically, specifically pertaining to black women. Yep. Um, and in the clip, don't, um, don't. Andrew was making a joke. Uh, I'm not even going to get into specifics. Don't, making a, don't uh, you like, get in? Frankly, like racist joke. Yeah. And <sighs> we were laughing at it. Me? And to give, there's, there's, <laughs> first of all, before we get into like specifics or anything like that, obviously there's just literally no excuse. Pause. There is no excuse. Agreed. Pause. There's no excuse. There is no fucking excuse. He's standing on business. Ow. Um and- <laughs> Can you pause? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Pause. No excuse yeah. right now. I just want to take in the beginning of it. There is no excuse for jokes. <laughs> there is never an excuse for making jokes. But can we try? I'm not gonna ever make an excuse for See, they're gonna silence the black man that's on the show. Being a comedian. There is never an excuse 
for making jokes. Where yeah. was okay? the joke? That is a real statement no <laughs> said by a man. Complainers and abusers <laughs> is the joke. I just want that to Sorry, be clear. Sorry, that's not a there good punchline. never an excuse for making jokes oh, with man. the boys. Go on, go on. Let's take it serious. Look at, but look at, look at how sad he is over on the it's left. Like, like it is, yeah. <laughs> fight, fight is a real thing. In he is. So not, not I expect no less responses. We should go back because he's going through so there, it right, 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 right now. Look, look how he practiced this. Let me pick my skin off my guys. No, no, no. I need you to watch him. Look at bite his bottom lip again and, and he's it's too about scared to stand up for himself realizing that you don't know what you're prepared for you don't know how to prepare for something you don't know you don't know what's yeah. gonna happen yeah. Yeah. once it's happened one time you're like plus plus right. you know what's mad funny about this is that they had shit that they asked to take out the episode you know what they didn't ask to take out your racist slander <laughs> <laughs> Why is your nose twitching? <laughs> <laughs> they had shit. Their 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 producer, or whatever, was like, "Hey, we really think that's inappropriate. We like to take that out. That's very uncomfortable." Their fight and flight instinct really kicked in after the power down. But with that joke about the black women, nothing. Nothing so really seen. The fight or flight wasn't really there. Your delivery, afterwards. Your delivery was too good. I think. Maybe what they were seduced by delivery. Yeah. I, I like them. I don't. I feel badly going through this, but you don't got to protect anybody. That's what I would say. I like to y'all personally, to y'all publicly, you don't got to protect. Your people are equal. Fuck. And what Andrew Schultz doesn't understand, if you if you publicly talk this badly about uh, black women, you're only pushing black men towards your women. <laughs> Absolutely. And well, so watch it. Watch your girl. Okay. Watch your little family for some big black dick. Take her down. Okay. I, or your daughter. You know, because they they it, sometimes sometimes it turns in about twenty years. That's a fact. Okay, you sitting down at the table with some biracial ass uh, grandchildren. Okay. So with that being said, when you push this rhetoric as a white man, you're only pushing black men to take your women. Look at that. Look at God. Look at God. Won't he do it? <laughs> <laughs> and what I tell you, Andrew Schultz, man, you are completely oblivious to what the real problem is. Yeah. You can laugh through that. And you never denied when your partner, your co-host, actually claimed it as racial slander. You never denied it. You laugh through it. See, I actually tune in to a few episodes, he and Char Charlemagne, and I can sense that yeah. you have some opinions that may differ from the more liberal side, and you yeah. kind of oh no, he's absolutely isn't he a Trump supporter? And you disguise, yeah, yeah. and you dis you disguise it by having alliances with black people. Yeah, having black people be on the podcast. That's you, but you got a docile nigga on there. He's right. not speaking up. Yeah. He's not standing on business, right? He, not at all. He's ag in agreement with you, and right? And giggling with the shit. Giggling with it when he kind of dropped a different opinion to let you know that it might have been. And then you hurried up and you shut him down. Yeah. Right? You basically said, guess what? Remember whose podcast you on, right? Remember who running shit around here. You know, you don't have nobody with no backbone. You don't got me on your podcast to be like, nah, what you said is punching down on black women. Leave us alone. We've been through enough. And you ain't, okay? got, no, you ain't got no beard on your face. So you go get, you go feel that smack. Yeah. You go feel that but smack. But in his defense, um, being on the New York comedy scene, some of the black women that are on that scene, they are complainers. See. That ain't helping our fight. We, I'm we gotta, sorry. We, let's stand, we but that's stand, just them. We got to stand on business. He ain't never business. seen me complaining. All right. Okay. We got to stand on business. We standing on business. Yeah. All right, moving on. <laughs> oh, what does that bring us to next? Oh, oh, oh kind of religion in its own sense. <laughs> <laughs> This is the first time we kind of had a religious topic. Okay. And who's to bring it in? Brittany Renner reveals that she is going broke. Okay. Brittany Renner uh, has officially converted to Islam, transforming her lifestyle and out outlooks entirely. The hot, what is that? Hajib? 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 Hajib. Ciao. Hajib. That shit ain't English. I don't feel bad when words ain't really, cause it's not pronounced the way it, it looks. Ha, you gotta <laughs> say it like Hajib. It's H I J A B. It, it's Muslim brothers ah! and sisters. Comment. We need some okay, correction. Yeah, we want to respect your religion. Okay, she got a scarf on her head. Okay. All right. 
Um, That's a and do-rag. if you don't know who uh, uh, Brittany Renner is, Brittany is a professional groupie. Um, and she's going broke after having a baby with NBA player PJ Washington. And you may say to yourself, she has a baby. The baby can't be not like older than like about three years old. And you may be asking, like, she's with the NBA player with a lot of money. Like, how is she going broke? Like, she should be able to pay her bills with child support. He got a good he only got She got she the first baby mama. Well, uh, there were ongoing rumors about Washington, um, PJ uh, Washington, providing two hundred thousand per month for child support. However, Renner later debunked uh, the rumors, claiming that Washington only pays twenty five hundred dollars monthly. The rest she provides for her baby. Twenty five hundred dollars a month ain't shit, especially in a city like L.A. But is she in L.A.? I don't know. I think she is. I- I've seen her out here before. Well, listen. She's in a major city. If she's getting twenty five hundred dollars a month, mm-hmm. I know some girls down in Mississippi only get by six hundred dollars. I know some getting uh forty one dollars a month. That's what I'm saying. So be appreciative. Now take take that boy down yeah. to Ash Bagash and get about eight outfits every month. But let's watch our video. She reveals why she's going broke. Allahu Akbar. I've gone through a lot of changes internally. And as a result, my outer world has completely (laughs) crumbled. (laughs) Two hours. Woo! Wow. Uh, Leaving me incredibly uncertain in just about every area in my life. I have no idea where I'm going to live (laughs) or how I'm going to provide for my son. But Allah has moved mountains for me. And I trust that this will be no different. I feel like Alice when she ate the cookie and her feet went through the windows and she's crammed in the house like that. I've outgrown where I am. The facade is fading, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And I'm at a place where I don't want anything that doesn't have my name on it. Take it away. It serves no purpose here. And I don't want a penny more than I'm meant to have because I can do a lot with a little. The facade is fading. And when the facade fades and all the BS is cleared out, it makes room for what has always been for you. Mm. All right. Um, so basically that twenty five hundred dollars a month and selling a uh, coochie is like it's not enough. You know, if she could still sell the coochie, then that'd be, or like do her little, you know, professional groupie shit, then she could be all right. But uh, she has fully switched over to uh, Islam. Um, I wouldn't say she fully converted though. You know why? Because she's still making videos laughing and Muslim women ain't supposed to be doing all of this. See, I'm going to say this. I don't believe she going broke because every broke person I know no, that ain't a damn thing funny about being <laughs> broke. But I tell you, every broke person and I know. And that sunroof look like, bitch, you could just, that that car is a, basically a studio apartment in Los Angeles, California. With every the broke person don't laugh. Every yeah. broke person I know, it's hard to make yeah. them laugh. Yeah. She a little bit it too excited. It seems like about she's it. trying to maybe uh, garner like the attention of like some rich Arab. Yeah, Dubai. Yeah, yeah, Dubai. Dubai. Yeah, she's and trying to get over to Dubai. Because they're going to slide in the DM. Yeah, we already peeped your game. Yeah. We already peeped your game. Yeah. But listen, you, 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 we, I'm from the South. I know broke people. Your, your skin too oily and greasy. Yeah. To be broke. And another thing, too, people always say they're going broke. Go get a job. You're getting $2,500 a month. Get you a regular job. People who be claiming this shit on the internet because they don't want to work regular jobs anymore. They don't want to go and be a a, a, a manager at a, a, a Nike IHOP. store. Yeah, something so like that. So we can get discount. Yeah, something. Okay. Go be, try to go back, depending on your college degree, is to try to be a teacher or something like that. They don't want to do none of that. Yeah, right? they don't want to work. They still want the whole lifestyle without the hoeing, and it don't work. And y'all don't be hoeing But you ain't got to be broke. And y'all don't be hoeing that good either. These are, hoes, hoes ain't like how they used to be. Honestly, no, they, they got some good hoes out here. They do what they yeah. I mean, they they messing around with you. She better talk to them twins. The, what are they? Well, that's bestiality. Yeah. Oh, 
Well, see them. Them some sometimes hard. you gotta do what you gotta do to feed your kid. Them some hard losing Isaiah. Homes. Okay. Yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> that's a fact. So with that being said, um, I don't know. It just seemed like. Well, it's, I, I, it's I don't a know trend. too many Muslim women that have fully converted, like just like on Instagram, still making videos and content. I, well, I mean, but I'm pretty sure it is. It's not against it to have a cell phone, but she just seemed like she one foot in, one, and, and it's just something about a lot of what. That's one thing I appreciate about Drea. Drea gonna stick to what she know. She ain't switching up. She ain't jumping on the spiritual God train, Islam train, like Black China mm -hmm. and Brittany Renner. She's sticking to what she know. And because she stick to what she know, she went and got her a younger athlete, right? Yeah. Younger, dumber. You know what I mean? Boom. Jump on that money train, get you another 18 years. Brittany still look good, still mm -hmm. got a nice body, pretty face. Girl, you should have just went back. Well, see, and then get you a man and convert while you in a relationship with that man. But you don't convert before you get the relationship. That's just stupid. Well, Drea and now is you, a now you, case. now because once you convert, so you get you a man and then you become a housewife and convert to just being Christian, let him cheat on you or whatever. But at least you got the thing, you fuck around, get a divorce, then you mess around, you get a little money, get a little settlement, get a little uh, alimony, get a little child support, you all of this kind of stuff. Play, yeah, th th tell them to play. Okay, but with this being said, you don't convert first. Because once you convert first to Islam, you can't play with God. And then she's gonna meet a rich Christian. You can't go back. She gonna meet a rich Christian. That's what's gonna happen. And then she gonna have a conflict. He gonna be like, I can't even do nothing with you. Yeah. But you know what's crazy? But she she should just write a book at this point. But yeah. speaking of Drea though, Drea's yeah. a different case. Yeah. Drea comes from them biblical times of Jezebel ways. What you mean? Like, just think about it. Like how she moved is like strategic. Mm. She went and got a 21 year old who was gonna be a superstar, a super max player. Yeah. He probably has 17 more years of Ooh. making a, a abundant amount of money. She got 18 more and years of child support. she got 18 support. more years of child support. So That's what I'm saying. Brittany, Brittany has the same physical capability to obtain that. You know what I mean? I, I just think Brittany... But Dre don't be talking as much. She talk too damn she much. She talk too damn much. Exactly. She probably could get a nigga, but they be like, girl, shut up. You know what I mean? And Drea just tell Yeah, so you, if, like, you gonna if you going to learn anything from Islam, it ain't the clothes, girl. It's learning to shut up. Okay? You even on the internet still talking shit. And men, be we- Be quiet. And men, we like hoes that know they hoes. And quiet hoes. And quiet hoes. Fun hoes. Exactly. Brittany the type of, we seen her go on a podcast and be about to fight a dude after she wanted to sit on his lap and twerk. So we we don't want, the hoes can't be happy and then violent. Yeah, okay? She the doing spot. the whole game wrong. Hoes got to be happy 24-7. Yeah. You can't be an angry hoe. Don't nobody like angry hoes. You need to go back if to the so, board. they going to hit and they going to move on. But if you want to stick around, you got to be a happy hoe. Happy ho. Yeah, give, them, give them game. H2O. Happy ho. We're going to have a class on uh, Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah. Y Teach y'all. Okay. Y'all need play yeah. by playbook. But she need to go and hop on the plane and go on over to Dubai um, and, 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 and twerk. And you know, like low key, I know her diet has changed with this new religion. And if she going broke, oh, she can't eat pork. Yeah, she ran. And pork is the cheapest meat you can get. And they eating tuna and saltine crackers. Just say it. Yeah, uh, I think that somebody gonna reach out and save her, but her attitude gonna make them release her back into the wild. See, she didn't need a religion change only; she needed an attitude change as well. I think she's going to get one of them old basketball, put like a James Worthy or something like that. Ain't no young boy about to deal with that, all that talking. When Even you get the older, older ones don't want to deal with her. She yeah. get drunk and get crazy. Maybe the, maybe the religion is making her not drink no more. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, because I saw the way she was treating Charleston White. Yeah. You know, so uh, good luck to her. Yeah, uh, you trying to ride Charleston White. Uh, it sounds like, um, you know, uh, Kamala's going to have a tax credit for your ass, so. You should be good. Hey, yeah, Just vote. exactly. Just vote. Hey, hey, hey. And I ain't telling people how to vote. Vote in your interest, Brittany. And I'm if Kamala you how to vote. is saying that she's going to give you a tax credit, that's in your best interest. There you go. All right. And that's it for today. 
Hey, hey, guys, guys, guys. I appreciate you guys for tuning in to Unapologetically Daphne. Now, once again, I have on my crazy-ish t-shirt. Boom. Feels Make sure wonderful. you go ahead and hit my website, www.imdsprings.com for your merch. Hey. And as always, I'm wearing Daphne Springs lipsticks. Mwah. Ew. Yeah. Yeah. You say you like to swallow up. Hey, come on now. I'm All not right. T.D. Jakes. I mean, it's the, you know, the, you pulled out the lipstick. Okay, so. <laughs> oh. ah! Yo. Comedy shows coming up. Check out my website. Make sure you follow me, like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. Follow, like, comment, and subscribe.